Howdy folks, uh, AJ coming at you again, your resident vintage gamer, and uh, I gotta tell you that uh, times right now are exciting, because as uh, in one of my previous videos, I had mentioned that the TSR name had returned, uh, and Guy Gax Magazine was going with the first edition, or sorry, the first issue was uh, in the process of being shipped. Um, I have since that time I have learned some additional information and I was able to confirm from watching some other uh, some other videos and stuff which I'm going to link uh, in the uh, description below for you um, that what actually happened was uh, the trademark for TSR uh, actually lapsed and uh, the people that are producing Gygax magazine uh, and um, I believe uh, a couple of uh, Gary Gygax's sons are involved, Luke Gygax, and uh, I'm not sure of the other the other gentleman's name, um, but uh, from what I've been able to ascertain, uh, they're involved with it, and uh, so that's how the TSR name has been resurrected because uh, apparently Wizards of the Coast just let the trademark lapse, and somebody associated with um, um, you know the uh, some of the old school people uh, happened to look it up and see that it had lapsed and they picked it up and now now we're back uh, with uh, the TSR uh, games um, intellectual property whatever you want to call it being returned and uh, so I've also um, I also know since my last video that some of the, some people have already got their first copy of Gygax magazine um, my I got my update uh, saying that mine had been shipped, so I'll probably get it in a couple of days or so. Um, so for all of us old, you know, old school role play game, role playing games uh, aficionados, <clears throat> uh, these are exciting times for us because uh, there's kind of a it seems like there's kind of a renaissance going on. Um, so and one of the things uh, that um, has kind of got me. Uh, a little bit excited is that uh, um, a lot of the the guys that that worked with Gary Gygax and with Dave Arneson, those guys are starting to come about, uh, come around um, on YouTube. They're getting interviewed. They're telling a lot of stories about the old times and and kind of rekindling um, that feeling uh, that we all of us old timers had back in the day. You know. Um, before World of Warcraft and before EverQuest and all that stuff where we all just used to sit around a table and just have a freaking blast you know uh, rolling up a character and, and going into a dungeon or or wherever the night took us you know uh, so um, there's actually a there's actually a, um, a guy uh, who's got a he's got a, uh, a YouTube channel called and I want to make sure I get this right um, Grognard Games, and I'm going to put a link here for you guys so you can just follow it. Grognard Games uh, is the name of his channel, and uh, he is he has interviewed at least two that I've seen on there. Uh, he interviewed um, uh, Robert Kuntz, who uh, has been around since the beginning, uh, and he interviewed uh, Tim Kask, who um, uh, has been around from the beginning as well. And uh, both those videos are on his channel, and I'll put links there for you guys. Um, because if you have been playing Dungeons & Dragons uh, um, since the beginning, or even if you started in the 80s or whatever, the stories that these guys are, you know, are telling in these interviews, um, you, you will find... Uh, fascinating. So um, I'll put links in there for you guys. And um, one of the stories that uh, Tim Kask uh, told was about how, uh, as Gary Gygax used to always say, he used to say that the the rule books and the source material and everything was just a guide for uh, for your gaming, uh, not you know. You didn't have to live by those those rules um, to where it impacted the fun, 
as he as he would put it. And Tim Cass gives an example in one of the videos about um, where he had a party. He was DMing and he had a party that was uh, about half dead, and they were really going to have to, you know, kind of come up with a miracle to get out of the situation they were in or whatever. And there was a dwarf in the party, and he. He, I don't want to spoil the story because you watch it on the video and everything. But anyway, so he does something um, that uh, kind of goes off the rails, but it works. And it was very improbable that it was going to happen, but uh, it, it, it worked. And so the DM went with it, and it became the stuff of legend. Uh, it, you know, the guy got a reputation from it just from that one gaming session and everything. And I'll, you'll go to the video, and you'll watch it, and you'll, you'll, you'll see what I'm talking about. But it made me think back to uh, when I was DMing, and, and I I kind of, uh, I don't want to say I co-DMed, but I, me and another guy, a buddy of mine named Finn, we would trade off DMing. Uh, so he had a campaign that he would be running, I had a campaign, and so if one of us was kind of burned out a little bit on DMing and decided we wanted to play, we would switch up. And so we kind of had these two concurrent uh, campaigns going at the same time, and which which was a lot of fun being able to switch it up like that. And it was one of those periods where I was DMing, and uh, his character, I'm not going to tell you the whole name, because I'm sure that he, uh, it's a, it's actually a pretty cool name, and I'm sure he doesn't want to see it show up in some book or something that, you know. So I'll just give you the first part. It, is, it was Jake. And uh, so, uh, and Jake was a, uh, he was a, a thief, and he was, uh, my buddy Finn, just you know, he he's always had the gift of gab. He's always been able to kind of smooth talk his way out of things in real life and everything. So that kind of translated into the game. And uh, there was a situation where we're in we're in a in the town that I it was a town that I had come up with and and, and uh, developed and everything um, for role playing purposes and everything to support the campaign. And they kind of the group kind of. Uh, just kind of started making um, an adventure in the town there. They were, they were getting involved with, with town politics and the Thieves Guild and all this kind of stuff. And so I kind of had to go with it. Um, and so there was a, there was a, they actually uh, kind of got on the good side of the, of the city watch. And even though Jake was, you know, he was a, you know, he was a, a lawful neutral or a chaotic neutral thief. So he was, you know, he was capable of anything at any moment, uh, and that's how my buddy played it. Uh, so they kind of got on the good side of the watch, and there was a night where there was something going on, and so the watch asked uh, a couple of the party members to uh, to assist them in searching for somebody or something like that. And so so Jake decides, because it's in the middle of the night, and they're walking around, you know, by the wall of the city wall or whatever, and it's kind of out of sight. And he tells me, or he slips me a note and says that he wants to, um, uh, he wants to blackjack this guard that, that they're walking with. And I'm guessing he's gonna, you know, rob him or whatever, he, you know, whatever the plan is. He's, he tells me he pulls his blackjack out and he's gonna, he's gonna knock this guy out. And so I go with it, and and he he has to roll, and he makes a roll and he rolls a one. So of course I say, well. Uh, he rolls it, and I see it, and I said, well, uh, your blackjack goes right by this guard's ear to the point where, I mean, it's so close he can hear it, and he turns around to see what's it, and no sooner did I get that out of my mouth than my buddy Finn reacted and said, and I said, the guard goes like this, and my buddy Finn goes, what was that? <laughs> and he did it so fast and so believable that... I couldn't help but to go along with it and say that the guard assumed that somebody had thrown something and it missed both of them because he did it so he reacted so fast sitting there at the gaming table that I had to go with it. I mean, I could have easily said, "Oh, he doesn't buy that. He doesn't buy your bullshit for one second and he stabbed you." I mean, he, I could have, you know, I could have, but he did it so fast I had to go with it. And we we're all busting out laughing at the table because he did it. It was just perfect, and uh, I mean that's the kind of stuff that uh, this renaissance that that hopefully we're in the middle of is going to be able to bring back 
you know, nights like that, you know, situations like that where, I mean, I could, the whole group, if I was to get them together and say, and just say, do you remember the night that Jake, and that's all I'd have to say, and they would all instantly remember and say, oh yeah, he faked out that guard, he missed, and he, he you know, he, he went right along with it and pretended like something got thrown past him, you went right by, by both of them, you know, they would both, they would all remember that, you know, I mean, it was, it was awesome, so. I'm hoping that we're getting back to to that type of game, and it sure would be a, a lot of fun. So uh, along that lines, the other thing that I wanted to bring up was that uh, that in the interview with Tim Cask, I found out that that he is responsible for uh, developing out um, the 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 monster that's in the monster manual that we we've all said all these years have called it the bullet. But it turns out, if you look at the way it's spelled, he went with the French pronunciation of boulet. And if you look at that, it, it's actually with double T and all that. And it, yeah, you can see that. And uh, he tells a whole story about it in the interview. You're going you're to see if you go there. But uh, that's always been one of my all-time favorite monsters in, in the Monster Man, because it's, it's the land shark. And he tells a story about if anybody's been watching Saturday Night Live for all, you know for years and years, they know where what where Land Shark came from. Well, apparently that's where he got that term from. He took it straight from. He was actually working on the 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 stats for the monster, and Saturday Night Live was on in the background, and that's how he he just put two into he just said, and that's so it's called the boule, but then in parentheses he's got a Land Shark, you know. So anyway, those those kind of stories are you know what you're going to see in these interviews if you, if you decide to watch them. So as my item for my collection that I thought I'd show tonight, I figured I'd just show the original Monster Manual. And I know most of you, if you're an old-time gamer that, that knows about what all the stuff I'm talking about, you, this is, you, know, you all know what this looks like. But if there's some people that are younger that haven't, you know, played the original, you know, AD&D and, and all that and haven't seen this, that was what the original Monster Manual looked like right there. And as a matter of fact, I on the inside cover on the very first page is a picture of the and I'm still gonna call it a bullet because I like that better of the of the boot of the uh, of the boule or bullet I prefer bullet you can say boule if you want to but that's it right there um, also known as the land shark so um, I figured I'd show that as my my item from my collection going down nostalgia road there um so anyway that's that's it for this uh particular video um i'm gonna put a link uh i'll put an annotation up here um for uh, to to show you where the other video that i first talk about tsr and, and gygax magazine and all that so that if you want to check that out you can too so uh, until next, next time, uh, we will catch you on the flip side.